In this video, you'll be learning all of the important timings that you should know for playing ranked games in Mobile Legends. Knowing these timings will help you plan your rotations better and boost your chances of winning your games. Let's start with the towers first. The first tower in the lane is known as the Outer Turret. In the first 5 minutes of the game, the Outer Turret will have a Gold Shield. When the shield is active, any heroes in your team nearby the turret will have a 15% damage reduction bonus. This allows you to take less damage when you're near your turret. This bonus increases to 25% if you're playing in a mythic rank game. However, enemies will be able to gain gold when they deal damage to the shield up to a maximum of 360 gold. This shield will disappear when the timer reaches 5 minutes. The second tower is called the inner turret. If your outer turret is destroyed in the first 8 minutes of the game, the inner turret on the same lane will gain a 50% damage reduction bonus for itself. It will last 1 minute after the outer turret has been destroyed. This will help to slow down a force push from the enemy team on that side of the map. The third tower which is also the last line of defense for your base is known as the inhibitor turret. It has a wave clear mechanism in the first 12 minutes of the game which will activate whenever an enemy minion enters the turret range. The effect will deal 80% damage to the minions in range, which usually kills all of them instantaneously. But this mechanism will only trigger once per game for each turret, and only during the first 12 minutes of the game. So take note of the timer and which tower has already triggered the effect. So let's move on to the lane minions next. Minions in all lanes will start spawning at 11 seconds and respawn every 30 seconds. So the second minion wave will spawn at 41 seconds and the next one at 1 minute 11 seconds and so on. You can use these timers to plan when to cut waves or whether you should recall a bit later so you don't miss a minion wave. At the start of every two waves, the minions will move slightly faster than previously. So they will reach the towers quicker and put more pressure on the lanes as the game progresses. In addition, at the 12th minute of the game, all minions will be granted a great boost in their movement speed. As we can see from the example, the minions in the later part of the game reach the outer turret faster than during the earlier parts of the game, and those after 12 minutes move a lot faster. Also, the first 10 minion waves of the game are slightly different from the ones after. For the EXP and goal lane, the cannon minions will grant a bonus 35% EXP or goal respective to their lane. The early mid lane minions were recently changed, and there are now 4 regular minions instead of the standard 2 regular and 1 cannon minion during the first 10 waves. This has allowed mid laners to clear the waves quicker and rotate earlier than before. Additionally, Junglers and roamers cannot gain rewards from killing lane minions unless there's no teammates nearby. But this effect will expire on the 5th minute for junglers and the 8th minute for roamers, so they will be able to gain rewards thereafter. So if you're a jungler, don't farm lanes in the early game unless you're helping your teammates do a quick push. Next, we have both buff monster camps first spawning at 20 seconds into the game and they will respawn every 90 seconds after the monsters have been killed. You should take note for the purple buff monsters, this applies to both monsters as they will not respawn unless both have been killed. You can take advantage of this by not killing the small monster to delay your enemy's buff respawn. The buff itself will last 75 seconds and a respawn timer will appear on the map once your buff has ended. If you took the buff, you can also gauge roughly how long the buff respawns by looking at the buff indicator. The Little Wanderer will first spawn at 48 seconds into the game, and it will respawn every 2 minutes after it has been killed. After killing it, it will spawn a baby version of itself which will patrol the part of the river for 45 seconds, giving vision to that area during that period. A grey dot will appear on the map 40 seconds before the Little Wanderer respawns and the countdown timer will start when there's 15 seconds left. Small crabs will start to spawn at 42 seconds into the game at both side lanes. They will grant the killer a bonus of 30 gold over 9 seconds and they will respawn 20 seconds after they have been killed. At 2 minutes into the game, the small crabs will transform into large crabs. The gold bonus that they give is increased to 60 gold over 18 seconds and they will take 2 minutes to respawn after dying. The first turtle will spawn during the second minute of the game. It will respawn 2 minutes after it has been killed and will stop respawning on the 8th minute of the game. Killing the turtle will reward the killer with a shield and a buff to their damage. The killer's team will also receive a shield which is smaller, so try to give the last hit to the team's carry who can better make use of the bigger shield and buffs. The first turtle will always spawn on the side of the EXP lane, which you can check early during the drafting phase. Thereafter, the remaining turtle's locations will be decided randomly. After 8 minutes into the game, the first slot will start spawning. It will respawn 3 minutes after you kill it. If the turtle was killed between 6 to 8 minutes of the game, this will delay the first spawning of the lord as the respawn timer of the lord and the turtle overlaps during this period of the game. So if you have a massive lead and want to end the game early by taking an early lord, Make sure you do not delay the lot spawn by leaving the turtle untouched when the game is approaching 7 to 8 minutes. At the 12th minute, 
the Lord will automatically be enhanced. This will grant the Summon Lord a charge ability which will deal 50% damage to the first turret it encounters in the lane. At the 18th minute of the game, the Lord will change to its evolved form. At this point, in addition to the charge ability from its enhanced form, the Summon Lord will also grant bonuses to itself and the teammates near it. This includes a damage reduction bonus to itself that increases the more teammates that are near it, and a damage bonus to all teammates nearby. So to take full advantage of this, you should try to have your team push together near the Lord if you can. Take note that the enhanced and evolved mechanic will only be triggered if the neutral Lord is not being attacked or trying to attack even if it's already past 12 or 18 minutes. You have to return him to his resting position and you will get the notification that he's enhanced or evolved. Otherwise, he will not be upgraded and you will not get the additional perks from the upgrades. To know for sure that the lot is upgraded, keep an eye out for the notification from the game as shown here. An additional tip is that the lot will always spawn and walk in the enemy lane which is the weakest when it spawns. Its first choice will be to walk in the lane with the least turrets. If all lanes have the same amount of turrets, it will go to the lane which turret has the least HP. When there are no turrets left, it will go to the mid lane. So with this information, you can plan which lane to go for a push before the lot even spawns. I hope this video has helped you better understand the timings in Mobile Legends. If you found this video useful, I'm sure you'll find this next one great as well. Well, thank you for staying to the end and I'll see you in the next one.